The El Chapo escape fears are not unfounded. He tunneled out of the last Mexican prison where he was locked up and rode to freedom on an underground motorcycle. The violent underworld of Mexican drug cartels is dominated by formidable figures, each competing for power and control. Among the many notorious leaders and foot soldiers associated with Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, certain names stand out due to their ruthless tactics and unwavering loyalty. This video shines a light on some of El Chapo's most feared hitmen, revealing the dark tapestry of organized crime woven deep into Mexico's history. Number 1. Jose Jorge Balderas Garza, a.k.a. LJJ. Jose Jorge Balderas Garza, commonly known as LJJ, emerged as a formidable enforcer within the world of Mexican cartels. Associated with the Sinaloa cartel, LJJ played a crucial role in some of the most violent confrontations that rocked Mexico in the late 2000s. His ascendancy to power was marked by bloodshed and an unyielding drive to eliminate rivals. LJJ's entry into organized crime can be traced back to his ties with the Beltran Leva brothers, who were once allies of El Chapo, but eventually became his adversaries. As alliances shifted and betrayals became rampant, LJJ positioned himself as a loyal asset to the Sinaloa cartel, leveraging his relationship with the Beltran Leva to secure a prominent place within the cartel's ranks. LJJ's reign was not limitless. Like many involved in the cartel world, he eventually faced the consequences of his actions. Captured in 2011, his arrest was seen as a significant achievement for Mexican authorities. The capture underscored the volatile nature of the drug trade and the fleeting nature of power in the world of cartels. While in custody, details of LJJ's operations surfaced, painting a clearer picture of the vast network of contacts, operations, and methods he used to sustain his influence. Despite the various accusations and the evidence stacked against him, LJJ maintained a defiant stance, never fully conceding his role in the wave of violence that characterized his rise. In examining the life and operations of LJJ, one is reminded of the complex tapestry of relationships, betrayals, and power struggles that define the Mexican drug trade. He wasn't just a mere foot soldier, he was a reflection of the environment in which he thrived an environment where violence was not just a tool but a currency. Through his actions and the fear he instilled in both rivals and ordinary citizens, Jose Jorge Balderas Garza stands as a testament to the dark, treacherous world of cartel warfare. Number 2. Orso Ivan Gastelum Cruz, a.k.a. Cholo Ivan Orso Ivan Gastelum Cruz, more infamously known as Cholo Ivan, is one of the names that evokes a palpable sense of dread when mentioned in connection with the Mexican drug trade. Rising through the ranks of the Sinaloa cartel, Cholo Ivan became not only a trusted hitman for El Chapo, but also a prominent figure in the cartel's hierarchy, overseeing vast territories and orchestrating some of the bloodiest confrontations in the cartel wars. Cholo Ivan's foray into the world of crime began at a tender age. Lured by the prospects of power and wealth, he quickly became adept at the dark arts of the underworld. His loyalty to El Chapo and the Sinaloa cartel was unwavering, a trait that earned him the trust of the higher-ups and paved the way for his rapid ascent in the criminal enterprise. Yet for all his ruthlessness, Cholo Ivan was not invincible. In January 2016, in what can be described as a dramatic turn of events, he was captured alongside El Chapo in Los Mochis, Sinaloa. The duo's capture followed a fierce gunfight with Mexican Marines, bringing an end to Cholo Ivan's reign of terror. The operation highlighted the significant risks these cartel figures were willing to take, with Cholo Ivan reportedly even attempting to flee through the city's storm drains to evade capture. In custody, the depth of Cholo Ivan's involvement in the cartel's operations became clearer. From overseeing drug shipments to coordinating hits on rival factions, his fingerprints were on many of the Sinaloa cartel's most notorious endeavors. His capture was more than just the arrest of a hitman. It symbolized the temporary fall of a significant pillar of the Sinaloa cartel's power structure. In the annals of the Mexican drug war, Orso Ivan Gastelum Cruz, Cholo Ivan, will forever be remembered as a formidable force. A symbol of the lengths individuals might go for power and control, 
His story serves as a grim reminder of the human cost of the drug trade and the intricate web of treachery and ambition that fuels it. Number 3. Ismael Zambada Garcia, a.k.a. El Mayo Ismael Zambada Garcia, commonly referred to as El Mayo, occupies a unique position in the annals of Mexico's drug trafficking history. Unlike many of his contemporaries who met brutal ends or found themselves behind bars, El Mayo's ability to elude capture and maintain a degree of discretion has set him apart. But behind this veneer of subtlety lies a figure who has been instrumental in shaping the landscape of Mexico's narco-trafficking for decades. Born in the rural settings of Sinaloa, El Mayo's foray into drug trafficking was a journey that began in earnest during the 1970s. In those early days, he was involved in the seemingly innocuous trade of opium and heroin, but as the appetite for narcotics grew in the United States, so did El Mayo's ambitions. In the intricate labyrinth of Mexican drug cartels, alliances are often fleeting, but El Mayo's partnership with Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was one that would define the trajectory of the Sinaloa cartel. Together, they crafted a syndicate that was as adept at moving vast quantities of drugs as it was in orchestrating the downfall of rival cartels. Under their combined leadership, the Sinaloa cartel emerged as one of the most dominant forces in the drug trade, its tentacles reaching as far as Europe and Asia. The story of Ismael Zambada Garcia provides a window into the world of Mexican drug trafficking beyond the headlines. It's a tale that underscores the complexities of this trade, where alliances, betrayals, and ambition intermingle. As of my last update in September 2021, El Mayo remains one of the last old guard drug lords still at large. In the ever-evolving saga of the Mexican drug war, his ability to remain a step ahead of adversaries and law enforcement alike is a testament to his enduring influence and the intricate game of chess that is the world of narco-trafficking. Number 4. Mario Nunez Meza, a.k.a. M10 Mario Nunez Meza, known in the underworld by his alias M10, is another figure whose name resonates with infamy within the sphere of Mexican organized crime. As the dynamics of the drug trade shifted and cartels battled for supremacy, M10 emerged as a potent force, his rise characterized by a lethal combination of strategic acumen and brute force. Hailing from Durango, a region that has often been the epicenter of Mexico's drug-related violence, M10's initiation into the world of narcotics was perhaps inevitable. However, what set him apart from countless others was the meteoric trajectory of his ascent. Associated with the Sinaloa cartel, M10 was instrumental in the cartel's expansion efforts, especially in the northern regions of Mexico. M10's modus operandi was characterized by his aggressive tactics. Under his leadership, the Sinaloa cartel not only expanded its territorial reach, but also diversified its criminal enterprises. From drug trafficking to illegal mining and fuel theft, M10 showcased a keen sense of business, albeit one that operated beyond the boundaries of legality. His strategies, while effective, were often ruthless. Towns and communities that resisted were met with extreme violence, with M10's enforcers ensuring that any resistance was swiftly and brutally quashed. The tale of Mario Nunes Mesa, or M10, serves as a stark reminder of the volatile nature of the drug trade in Mexico. In a world where alliances shift with the wind and power is the ultimate prize, figures like M10 stand as symbols of both the entrepreneurial spirit and the unbridled violence that characterizes this dark underbelly. His journey, marked by ambition, betrayal, and resilience, provides a lens through which one can glimpse the tumultuous landscape of Mexico's narcotic enterprises. Number 5. Damaso Lopez Nunez, a.k.a. El Licenciado In the multifaceted narrative of Mexico's drug cartels, some figures rise not merely through violence, but through cunning, strategy, and an intricate understanding of the system. Damaso Lopez Nunez, commonly known as El Licenciado, is one such individual. His story offers a revealing insight into how the lines between law enforcement and the criminal underworld can blur, leading to a volatile mix of power, influence, and treachery. El Licenciado, which translates to The Graduate, is a title often reserved for individuals with a professional degree in Mexico. This moniker was apt for Lopez Nunez, Given his background as a former police officer and later a security official in the Sinaloan State Prosecutor's Office, 
However, it was his role as the deputy director of security at the Puente Grande prison that would shape his destiny and set him on a collision course with Mexico's drug trafficking underworld. It was in this capacity that Lopez Nunez became acquainted with Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, who was incarcerated at the same facility. Instead of ensuring El Chapo's imprisonment, Lopez Nunez became instrumental in orchestrating one of the most audacious prison breaks in history, aiding El Chapo's escape in 2001. This act of subterfuge not only showcased Lopez Nunez's influence within the system, but also marked the beginning of a deep alliance between the two men. Damaso Lopez Nunez's trajectory from law enforcement to the upper echelons of the Sinaloa cartel is emblematic of the complexities inherent in Mexico's drug wars. His life serves as a testament to the allure of power, the fragility of alliances, and the intricate dance between legality and criminality. Number 6. Ignacio Nacho Coronel Villarreal in the intricate mosaic of Mexican drug trafficking, certain figures stand out, not only for their brutality, but also for their business acumen and strategic foresight. Ignacio Nacho Coronel Villarreal was one such individual, whose role in the expansion of the Sinaloa cartel's reach, especially into methamphetamine trade, marked a significant chapter in the annals of Mexico's narco history. Hailing from the state of Zacatecas, Nacho Coronel began his foray into the narcotics business during the late 1970s and early 1980s. However, it was during the late 1990s and 2000s that he would emerge as a pivotal figure within the Sinaloa cartel. Partnering with the likes of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman and Ismael El Mayo Zambada, Coronel was instrumental in establishing the cartel's dominance, particularly in the western and southwestern parts of Mexico. However, the drug trade, with its vast profits, is also characterized by volatility and treachery. As the Sinaloa cartel's influence grew, so did the attention of law enforcement agencies. Cornell, despite his discretion, was firmly on their radar. The sprawling mansions, luxury cars, and opulent lifestyle, often financed by his drug proceeds, became symbols of the challenges Mexico faced in its battle against narco-trafficking. In 2010, this game of cat and mouse culminated in a dramatic operation in the heart of Jalisco. In a bid to apprehend Coronel, Mexican military forces stormed his residence. The ensuing gunfight resulted in Coronel's death, marking the end of one of the most influential figures in Mexico's methamphetamine trade. Ignacio Nacho Coronel Villarreal's story is emblematic of the complexities and paradoxes inherent in the drug trade. Here was a man who, through a combination of business savvy, strategic partnerships, and a keen understanding of market dynamics, carved a niche for himself in a world dominated by chaos and violence. Yet in the end, the very world he thrived in would also be his undoing. Number 7. Juan José Esparagoza Moreno, a.k.a. El Azul In a realm where brutality often overshadows strategy and flamboyance can eclipse subtlety, Juan José Esparagoza Moreno, better known as El Azul, charted a unique trajectory. His moniker, which translates to the blue one, perhaps alluded to his darker complexion, but within the narco underworld, it was his role as a mediator, a peacemaker of sorts, that truly set him apart. Originating from the state of Sinaloa, the birthplace of many notable drug lords, El Azul's beginnings in the narcotics trade can be traced back to the Guadalajara cartel of the 1970s and 1980s. However, as the landscape of drug trafficking in Mexico evolved, so did El Azul's role and affiliations. By the time the 1990s rolled around, he had firmly entrenched himself within the Sinaloa cartel, acting as a key liaison between its leaders, including the infamous Joaquin El Chapo Guzman and Ismael El Mayo Zambada. This ability to navigate the treacherous waters of cartel politics was augmented by Esparagoza Moreno's reputed aversion to overt violence. Instead of resorting to the macabre tactics often associated with the drug trade, El Azul preferred negotiation and compromise. This approach, while seemingly at odds with the modus operandi of his peers, lent him an air of respectability and even grudging admiration within certain quarters. Of course, Operating in such a milieu wasn't without its perils. Esparagoza Moreno faced multiple arrests and spent time behind bars. Yet each time he managed to emerge, his influence undiminished. Rumors of his death often circulated, 
only to be debunked later, adding to the enigmatic aura that surrounded him. By the time the 2000s drew to a close, reports of El Azul's activities began to wane. Some whispered of his retirement, others speculated about his health, and yet others claimed he had succumbed to the perils of his trade. The truth, as is often the case in the shadowy world of narco-trafficking, remains elusive. In the final analysis, Juan José Esparagoza Moreno's story offers a glimpse into an alternate archetype of a drug lord, one who wielded power not just through fear and brutality, but through negotiation, diplomacy, and an understanding of the delicate balance that underpins the world of organized crime. Number 8. Rafael Caro Quintero Rafael Caro Quintero, a name that resonates deeply within the annals of Mexico's narcotic trade, is both a vestige of an older era and a persistent shadow in the contemporary narco saga. With a trajectory spanning over four decades, Caro Quintero's influence has been pervasive, his legacy a mix of ruthlessness, cunning, and a relentless ambition that carved his place among the pantheon of Mexico's most notorious drug lords. Born in the rugged terrains of Badiraguato, Sinaloa, Caro Quintero's entry into the world of illicit trade was almost presaged by the landscape of his upbringing. Sinaloa, with its mix of inaccessible mountains and vast opium and marijuana fields, was a natural cradle for Mexico's burgeoning drug trade in the mid-20th century. By the late 1970s, Caro Quintero, in collaboration with Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo and Ernesto Fonseca Carrillo, established the Guadalajara Cartel, a precursor to many of the fragmented criminal organizations we witness today. Under Caro Quintero's stewardship, the Guadalajara Cartel flourished, capitalizing on the increasing appetite for narcotics, particularly in the United States. Their operations were expansive, spanning across multiple states in Mexico and linking with networks in South America, making them one of the dominant forces in the global drug trade. However, it was an incident in 1985 that would etch Caro Quintero's name indelibly into international consciousness. The abduction, torture, and subsequent murder of DEA agent Enrique Kiki Camarena brought Caro Quintero unprecedented infamy. This audacious act, a direct retaliation against American anti-narcotic efforts, not only escalated the U.S.'s war on drugs, but also turned Caro Quintero into one of the most wanted men in both countries. Post-release, while many believed he would recede into the shadows, the opposite proved true. Reports suggest that Caro Quintero sought to re-establish his dominance, clashing with the Sinaloa cartel and other emergent groups, demonstrating that the old guard still had some fight left. Rafael Caro Quintero's narrative, one that intertwines with Mexico's tumultuous journey through its drug wars, offers insights into the complexities of the trade. Here was a man, both a product and a shaper of his times, whose actions precipitated significant geopolitical maneuvers. His enduring influence, despite the odds, is testament to a combination of guile, audacity, and an understanding of the ever-shifting sands of the narcotic landscape. As of this writing, he remains a spectral presence, his whereabouts unknown, his legacy both a cautionary tale and a symbol of the challenges that persist in confronting the world of drug trafficking. Number 9. Isidro Meza Flores, a.k.a. El Chapito Isidro The multifaceted tapestry of Mexico's drug trafficking organizations is riddled with stories of ascendancy, rivalry, and resilience. Among these tales, the rise of Isidro Meza Flores, colloquially known as El Chapito Isidro, provides a window into the intricacies of cartel dynamics and the ever-evolving face of the narco world in the 21st century. Emerging from the agricultural heartland of Sinaloa, El Chapito Isidro's early days were marked by an affinity to the Beltran Leva organization, BLO, one of the formidable drug trafficking entities in the late 2000s. His role, primarily operational, saw him climb the ranks, demonstrating a keen aptitude for logistics and combat. This prowess was not merely the result of innate talent, but was honed through violent confrontations as cartels vied for control of lucrative territories and trafficking routes. It was this backdrop of internal discord that catalyzed El Chapito Isidro's eventual break from the Sinaloa cartel. 
Establishing his own faction, Mezaflores sought to consolidate his grip on key regions, particularly Sonora and Sinaloa. This ambition inevitably placed him on a collision course with the Sinaloa cartel, resulting in a series of confrontations that were as much about tactical gains as they were about signaling dominance. Meza Flores's strategy wasn't limited to direct confrontations. He also demonstrated a knack for forging alliances, particularly with remnants of the BLO and the emerging Jalisco New Generation cartel, CJ Yang. These partnerships, driven by mutual interests and shared adversaries, added a layer of complexity to the narco landscape, turning regional skirmishes into broader theatric wars. Yet, despite the violence and volatility, El Chapito Isidro's reputation grew. Described by many as a narco junior, due to his relatively younger age compared to other drug lords, Meza Flores embodied a new generation of cartel leaders. His approach, a blend of traditional narco culture with a more modern business-oriented mindset, illustrated the changing contours of organized crime in Mexico. As with many figures in this shadowy realm, a cloak of mystery surrounds El Chapito Isidro. Reports of his movements, operations, and even his current status are often shrouded in uncertainty. What is undeniable, however, is the indelible mark he has left on Mexico's drug trafficking landscape. In him, we see a reflection of the challenges and paradoxes inherent in tackling organized crime, a world where yesterday's allies become today's foes, and survival often hinges on adaptability, audacity, and an unyielding will to power. Number 10. Arturo Beltran Leva, a.k.a. the Boss of Bosses In the annals of Mexican organized crime, Arturo Beltran Leva, famously known as the Boss of Bosses, commands a significant and ominous presence. His trajectory not only illuminates the intricacies of cartel dynamics, but also exemplifies the brutal and sometimes fleeting nature of power in the underworld of narcotics. Born into the Beltran Leva clan, a family deeply embedded in the drug trade, Arturo's initiation into this perilous realm was almost preordained. The Beltran Leva brothers, Carlos, Alfredo, Hector, and Arturo, originally aligned themselves with the Sinaloa cartel, an alliance that yielded immense profits and power, with Arturo emerging as a key operative. His responsibilities ranged from overseeing smuggling routes to coordinating shipments, and under his watch, the cartel's operations expanded exponentially. However, the turbulent world of cartels is rarely devoid of internal rifts. A watershed moment arrived in 2008 when Alfredo Beltran Leva, Arturo's brother, was apprehended. The arrest, allegedly facilitated by intelligence from Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, sowed seeds of mistrust and animosity. Feeling betrayed, Arturo severed ties with the Sinaloa cartel, forging a new and independent path for the Beltran Leva organization, BLO. The schism between the BLO and the Sinaloa cartel translated into a violent turf war, with both factions unleashing a wave of brutality across Mexico. For Arturo, this was not merely a strategic endeavor, but a deeply personal vendetta. Towns and cities became battlegrounds, and the civilian populace bore the brunt of this unchecked aggression. Within the cartel hierarchy, Arturo Beltran Leva's leadership style was marked by an unrelenting ruthlessness. Stories of his brutality became legendary. It was said he would dine while his enemies were tortured before him, a macabre testament to his moniker. His reputation was further augmented by his penchant for opulence, with lavish parties and golden firearms adding to the lore that surrounded him. But such overt displays of power and wealth seldom go unnoticed. Mexican authorities, with assistance from the U.S., intensified efforts to apprehend Arturo. The relentless pressure culminated in December 2009, when an operation in Cuernavaca led to a fierce gunfight, resulting in Arturo Beltran Leva's death. His demise marked the end of an era for the BLO. Fragmentation soon followed with multiple factions vying for control, further escalating the violence. In the aftermath, Arturo's legacy emerged as a double-edged sword, a testament to the transitory nature of power in the narco world and a cautionary tale about the inevitable consequences of unbridled ambition. Arturo Beltran Leva's story offers a glimpse into the heart of darkness that pervades the world of drug trafficking. It's a world where alliances are fleeting, where brutality often supersedes strategy, 
and where the quest for dominance can lead to meteoric rises and equally precipitous falls.